Welcome to week three of Ballet Marvel. This week, Nebula. Uh, special thanks this week um, to Karen Gillan, who plays Nebula and who fearlessly tackled the role of the, this amazing role and um, brought to life this amazingly complex um, character who has survived trauma and who has an adopted sister. And thank you to her for really being like aware of that and sensitive to that and just really being a phenomenal actress and um, just making you care about Nebula because I feel like this is a character that we don't see often and maybe we should see more often than we do. Um, thanks to James Gunn, also the director of the Guardians of the Galaxy series for bringing this character uh, to life um, with Karen Gillan. Um, I really can't thank them enough for just being so amazing and caring about this character and making the audience care about the character and um, giving me another adoptee character that I can cosplay and another story that I can see on the big screen that that's familiar to me. Um, that really means a lot and I know a lot of people are fans of these films and yeah they're just really special to me as well um so yes special thanks to James Gunn and Karen Gillan um for this character um bringing her life on the big screen that's awesome um Nebula Week is dedicated to Winged Warrior also known as Chrissy Albertson who is just so kind and um just always a delight and and it's wonderful to have a friend at a con and to see a friend at a con and just, yeah. Um, so, and her art is just gorgeous. And she painted Nebula for me um, and it, it, it she painted her like the galaxy and it was just, oh, it makes me smile because it, it was a really beautiful painting. Um, uh, Nebula Week is also dedicated to Michi Troda of, um, the, uh, of uh, Hugo Award winning editor Michi Troda, who uh, formerly of Uncanny Magazine, who's just out there um, making genre more accessible and more um, diverse and more just welcoming to um, people who did ha who haven't always felt welcome. Um, what the first print anthology I appeared in. Um, Mitchie edited and she just made me feel so safe and um, it allowed me to write about something that I felt was important um, but I was scared but um, yeah she was nice enough to give me the opportunity and make me feel safe enough that I could write um, that essay. So let's get on with it. Um, this is the costume. Pretty cool. Um, <laughs> I am very warm right now because this is actually a leather-like material. <clears throat> I believe Carolina found it when she was out of town visiting family and she went to a fabric shop and she saw this and she's like, hmm, that's Nebula. And it is, I love it. I, I love the, the hints of browns and the blue um, and the belt that you will see me tie eight different ways because I can never remember how to tie it. Um, I really, really love the silver sleeve, which is, um, there are hand-drawn details on the silver sleeve. Um, it's meant to be an homage to her metallic arm because I really love that Nebula wears prosthetics and I feel that's an important part of her character. Um, the helm is one of my favorites that Carol has made. It is gorgeous um, and it has a very futuristic look. You can see the silver um, is meant to kind of be an homage to um, the kind of metallic lines in Nebula's head um, and obviously it's blue and purple just like Nebula. Swarovski crystals so it sparkles and yeah I just I love it it's very Nebula and it's oof Carol outdoes herself every time she makes a helm um so let's get on with it um so much like Loki I relate hard to Nebula Oh my god, do I relate hard to Nebula. Um, but I do kind of relate to her for a slightly different reason than I do to Loki, or slightly different reasons. I mean, there is there is a lot of overlap between the characters, 
Um, however, I think it's fascinating that you have two adoptees who have arguably survived trauma, but who approach it and process it in very different ways. That's good writing, folks. Um, so, yeah, Nebula survived trauma, and she was constantly and repeatedly traumatized in her formative years, in her younger years. Um, and she survived by becoming cold and bearing her emotions to a certain extent. And it makes her come off as mean. Um, however, I kind of understand it. I don't always agree with her actions, obviously. But I do understand that... I do understand needing to bury your emotions and like almost turning them off to survive. It's, it, it's not a pleasant thing to do, but sometimes it's what you need to do. Um, now, Nebula does, I feel, lash out occasionally. Um, I feel that's why she kind of is Thanos' puppet for a while. Um, but again, I feel like every kind of nastiness about her is a survival tactic. It's how she knows how to survive. Um, she, Nebula doesn't give a fuck what anyone thinks about her, and God, I love that. I love that she doesn't give a fuck what anybody thinks. Um, I do think it is a kind of tragic aspect of her character, though, because I think that not giving a fuck is a way of avoiding pain. Um, she doesn't have the luxury to care what people think about her. She doesn't have the luxury to be nice, or at least she doesn't think she does. Um, she's been isolated for so long that she either didn't develop or forgot a lot of social skills. Um, and you see this, you see this very clearly in the second movie, where it's like, you, it's really tragic because she just doesn't know how to accept affection. And it's, it, it kind of gives you this kind of moment of, oh my god, uh, this poor woman has never had a hug or anything. Um, the most is, like, the most she learned, I, I feel, is, like, she learned if she did good, she didn't get punished. And I think, like, that's just, it, it breaks my heart, honestly. Um, she also learned that letting people in and letting people get close results in unimaginable pain. She was betrayed a lot um, when she was younger. Um, and you see this in her relationship with Gamora. I feel she really did trust Gamora. And I feel like Gamora had a few more social skills than Nebula did. And I feel like Gamora kind of remembered her life more than Nebula did. And so Gamora knew how to play the survival game a lot more than Nebula did. And I feel like she used that to her advantage because she didn't know what else to do. Um, I think both of them really wanted to survive, um, but Nebula just kind of was the underdog constantly. Um, she, and like I said before, I feel she really trusted Gamora and I feel like that trust was like betrayed time and time again. And I think that's part of where her, her meanness and her rough edges come from. Um, yeah, like getting close to people, I think Nebula associates that with unimaginable pain, both physically and emotionally, because like anybody she gets close to betrays her and hurts her. And so, yeah, you, you, you may not agree with what she does, but you kind of understand where it comes from. Um, as a trauma survivor, um, I do feel... I feel for Nebula, I really do, because, and, and I feel, I relate with her because I feel out of touch with the world sometimes because, again, my trauma occurred in my younger years, um, and so I isolated myself for a very, very long time, and unfortunately I, isol I isolated myself um, when a lot of people were learning, like, how to form bonds and, and stuff, like, um, my trauma happened kind of in middle school, and that's kind of when you you learn to 
you, you make friends and stuff, and I didn't. <laughs> I mean, obviously, aside from my one friend who, God almighty, I don't, I, I don't know how, he, he was just a very kind individual. Um, so, I spent a fair amount of my formative years isolated, and as a result, I can, I often can be baffled or overwhelmed by social situations. Like, I, there are sometimes, I just don't understand people, and I don't understand how to wear different masks. Like, with me, what you see is kind of what you get, and I'm not saying that's a good thing, because I think it is a valuable skill to learn how to wear masks in different situations. It's a skill I do not have. I have tried to learn it, but just haven't had any luck. Maybe one day I will. Um, but yeah, I just... I don't understand it at all. I don't, I, I don't know how to do it. Um, and because of it, sometimes it feels like the world is speaking a different language. And it's one I don't, I don't speak. And it's one I don't understand. And so it's just, it's very difficult for me to, to understand people. And I know that sounds weird, and I'm probably oversharing, and this is pro probably going to get judged, like, unbelievable. Um, but yeah, and again, I just, I don't know how else to describe it. I don't know how else to say that. So, yeah, there it is. Um, yeah, so even though I don't always understand the world, and I don't always understand people, and even though I do get hurt a fair amount, like everybody does, I just keep living in it, and I just keep trying, because what else can you do? Um, and yeah, uh, I just keep figuring out how to navigate it. And so yeah, I do feel kind of like out of touch and out of, sometimes I even feel out of sync with the world, as weird as that sounds. But you know, that's life, I guess. So. Um, but yeah, Nebula. God, I love her. I love her! Um, so, this week, I will be talking about Alexander Campbell of the Royal Ballet. And the ballet I will be talking about is The Sleeping Beauty. So, stick around. Bye!